There were days that I blamed myself for being too greedy and there was a lot of self-loathing at first, wondering why I would fall for this. Does being digital native mean you're immune to online scams? Do Singaporeans underestimate the importance of safeguarding their finances, therefore making them an easy target for scammers? Well, today we're tackling a topic that can affect you regardless of age or how tech savvy you are. Online scams. Are we too savvy to be scammed? Our first story comes from Jenny, a student who recently fell victim to a scam through an online marketplace platform. So I was doing some spring cleaning and I found an old graphic calculator. I put it up on sale and quickly a buyer contacted me. The buyer asked me to email them photos of the graphic calculator because they wanted to buy it for their mother. So I gave them a benefit of doubt. Maybe the mom is not very tech savvy. And quickly after sending the buyer, notified me saying that the online marketplace will now send you an email asking you to verify the sale and you will get your funds. So when I opened the email, it looked very legitimate. So I just went ahead and clicked on the link. That led me to another website. And the website had this chatbot told me to follow a few steps to my digital banking app. It was after I confirmed my digital token a few times that I received an SMS notification saying that all my life savings have been transferred out of my bank account to this random stranger. Because you are in a generation that's described as digital natives. I can understand how it feels normal at first, but what made you just go with the flow? Before I actually went ahead with the transaction, I checked the buyer's information on the app. The buyer actually had multiple reviews, glowing reviews even. Okay. What went through your mind in that moment? I freaked out. So I have this function on where I receive SMS notifications for every transaction I make. I was still under the impression that something went wrong in the transaction. But of course, the buyer ignored me and blocked me right away. And the thing is, giving out an email address, you think it's nothing? Yeah, it didn't occur to me that giving out my email address would be such big of a deal because I didn't review any other banking information. Alan, thanks a lot for taking the time. As someone who's looking at anti-scam all the time, I want to touch on Jenny. Usually, these scammers will pretend to be buyers. They will try to coach the uh, victims into bringing them out of the ecosystem. Right. Because presently, most online platforms partner with the police and uh, they do not allow any opportunity to indicate any phone numbers or yeah. email. They will ask the victims on their email address and then they will separately send them emails with a link because your focus is really waiting to receive funds. So whatever notification that comes in, the victim doesn't really take note of it. By the time they realize, the funds are really out of the account. How are you extra prudent when it comes to transacting online? I never give out my personal particulars to anyone and I'm very, very cautious with anyone I do online transactions with. I still do online shop sometimes, but I have not used that particular website for a while now. A lot of my friends and family were actually very surprised because they're like, you're so young, how did you get scammed? I feel like it's important to let other people know just because you spend a lot of time online doesn't mean that you are exempt from being scammed. To a certain extent, you're actually more of a target. After listening to Jenny's encounter, you might think that phishing is one of, if not the biggest threat to our digital natives. But according to a 2023 Singapore scam report, the real bullseye for our tech-savvy generation is one not to be messed with. Cheryl, who is a working professional, shares her experience falling victim to a job scam. I received a message telling me that there is a job opportunity. We will add you to this WhatsApp group. All you have to do is help our merchants increase their visibility. We will give you the link to the product. You have to add it to your cart, but don't buy it from the platform. We'll give you an account number and after you pay directly, the merchant will refund you with a certain percentage commission. Were the purchases large quantity involving a lot of money? No, they put you in this group. It's like the beginner group. You're just starting out. So they give you very low value items that are like $4, $16, $20. So it was very easy for me to do this. It's not a big loss. After I transfer the money to the person, like I did get back my capital plus the oh. percentage of commission so until they said you're doing such a great job we want to put you into another vip group and the starting value of the products they give you was about 400 dollars. but i didn't get my money back 
right. from then on. They said like, I'm sorry, you didn't look at the instructions carefully. I took too long to finish the task. So because of that, you need to do another task and the system will automatically return you your funds. Are there other people in this group? So there are a lot of people, but half of the numbers were foreign numbers. I think what they want you to do in this group chat is to encourage the other victims. So when you get your money back, you're supposed to take a snapshot of what you've received and post it in that group chat. But now in retrospect, I don't know whether these are real uh, victims. So I was continuing to transfer money until I got to the point where I had to borrow money. I asked my brother, can you transfer me $15,000 and then I'll just pay you back once they transfer me the money. You're still faithful that they're gonna pay you back. Yeah, I felt like I did everything right. Maybe I was careless, it was my mistake, and that's what the scammers said. And screenshots are still coming in of other people who are successful sure. as well. Did you speak to anyone else? The whole time I was panicking by myself in the room. One of the reasons why I probably didn't reach out and text anyone else was because of this time limit that they give you. So they've created anxiety. They tell you like you have to finish within 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and then you would successfully complete this task. So so after a few days, everything that went through was a single tick and that's when you know that that number is not in use anymore. That's when it really sank in that it was a scam. I mean, this is a very different scenario. She didn't give away any of her credentials. This is also quite common in Singapore at the moment. You'll get those invites into certain groups to make quick money. You usually you earn about 5-10%. Once you start to get this money, now they will upgrade you to a certain group that you can earn more commissions. So that is where they put it in this kind of pressure. You go into distress mode and you start to panic, you ask, what about my money? Someone will say, I'll give you a second opportunity. Now you need to complete these three tasks in order to get back what you have paid out. And that's where you start to fall deeper and deeper into it. It's the hope that kills you. After the entire thing, right, there were days that I blamed myself for being too greedy and there was a lot of self-loathing at first, wondering why I would fall for this. Is it that harsh, greed? I think it's still greed, but I am okay knowing that I was greedy. I think it's an innate thing for sure. people to be greedy. Maybe at that point in time, my motives might have been wrong and that's why I self-loathe. I know DBS does a lot on the education front. What else is DBS doing as far as uh, protecting against scam? We do live surveillance based on past cases to detect certain transactions that may be suspicious. Once it's been picked up, we'll contact the customer to find out if the transaction is performed by the customer and for what purpose. We have uh, another called the DigiVault. So that is where you can securely put your funds into this vault. Even if the scammers can hack into your account, they can't touch this vault at all. These funds can only be assessed by you in person. In Jenny's case, it would be impossible for the bad guys to take whatever's in if she had a digivault. Yes. Okay. This is where we try to create a, a connective break from what you are doing. She has to go down in person to retrieve this money. And of course, the bank staff will ask why do we need this for? To ensure that you are not taking this money for other purpose that you might be in scam or in a situation right. or whatever. There's so many MOs that these bad guys could come up with. Let me put you on the spot. Do you have three golden rules? First and foremost, do not give away your credentials to anyone. Second is, do not click onto any clickable links that comes from unsolicited emails or SMS. And last but not least, anything that is too good to be true usually are not true. Right, it's good to be skeptical and start asking questions. Well, there you go. Being tech savvy doesn't guarantee you immunity from online scams. Scammers are constantly developing new tactics. However, by learning from real life experiences and building awareness on some common scammer tactics, we can stay vigilant and protect ourselves and the people around us.